On this episode of Hackbyte, we're going to take a first look at setting up the Wi-Fi coconut and see how we can use it to gather reconnaissance on the entire 2.4 GHz spectrum. The Wi-Fi Coconut is an awesome Wi-Fi reconnaissance tool that lets us monitor the entire 2.4 GHz spectrum thanks to 14 built-in Wi-Fi radios. Now if you aren't familiar with what exactly that means, Wi-Fi typically operates on the 2.4 or 5 GHz radio frequency. Although most devices are still using 2.4 GHz, since it's pretty ubiquitous and still the cheapest to implement for low-cost devices like smart home and IoT applications. Now since the 2.4 GHz spectrum is still pretty wide, communication on the spectrum is broken up into 14 different channels. For example, channel 1 ranges from 2.401 to 2.423 GHz, channel 2 ranges from 2.406 to 2.428, and so on and so forth throughout the rest of the channels. Now when it comes to monitoring all of these subdivisions of the 2.4 GHz spectrum, this can get pretty tricky with your usual Wi-Fi dongle. Since this only has one built-in radio, meaning it has to hop between all 14 channels in order to get an idea of what's going on nearby. Obviously, it's going to miss out on part of the conversation since it's trying to scan everything at the same time, but can really only focus in on one channel. Now, the Wi-Fi Coconut solves this issue by implementing 14 onboard Wi-Fi radios, meaning we're able to get a holistic capture of the 2.4 GHz spectrum and basically scan all the traffic that's going on around us. Today, we're going to see just how easy it is to get started with that and set up our Wi-Fi Coconut to start gathering passive Wi-Fi reconnaissance that we can analyze through a visual packet analysis tool called Wireshark. To follow along, all you're going to need is a Wi-Fi Coconut and a computer. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at the hardware. You'll notice that the Wi-Fi Coconut has two USB ports and you'll want to plug in the rightmost one to your computer, which will let you interface with it over a USB connection. But in the event that you don't have enough current to power up your coconut, the left port can be hooked up to a portable battery or power source in order to provide auxiliary power. Now, if we take a look inside, you'll see that we have 14 different Wi-Fi chips and these awesome blinky lights that are connected to a USB bridge that allows us to interface with them on our computer. So if I open up a Linux terminal and run a command like iwconfig, this should let me list out all the Wi-Fi interfaces that are currently connected to my computer. And here you can see we have 14 of these WLX0 devices, which are basically just the internal radios on the coconut. Now, while it is technically possible to use a tool like the Aircrack Suite in order to individually address each of these radios, I highly recommend you don't do anything that requires active transmitting on the coconut, since it's tuned specifically for passive Wi-Fi reconnaissance, and you can actually damage the internal circuitry if you were to do something like start up an active Wi-Fi attack. Now instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the official Wi-Fi coconut tool, which will streamline most of the capture process, as well as starting up these interfaces into monitor mode for us. To do that, you can head over to the official Hack5 documentation, which is at docs.hack5.org slash Wi-Fi coconut, and it's really easy to get started. All you have to do is just go down here to software and drivers, click on your operating system, which in my case is going to be Linux, and then you can follow along with these instructions here to set up the necessary libraries and dependencies and then build the tool from scratch. So to get started, I'm going to copy this command here since I'm running the Ubuntu operating system pop back over to my terminal, and then paste this command here. Now, once the libraries are finished installing, the next thing we can do is go ahead and clone the Hack5 GitHub repository for the Wi-Fi Coconut, which you can see I already have installed on my computer. And then the next thing we can do is just copy this line of commands here, which should change directories into the folder that we just downloaded, and then install some further dependencies. After that, all we have to do is just run make in order to compile the code. And then once that finishes, we can run sudo make install. And this should compile the tool and add it to our path. So now we can just go ahead and run sudo Wi-Fi coconut, which you can see starts up the Wi-Fi coconut and also runs this initialization sequence on the built-in LEDs. Now, if I switch back over to the terminal, you can see we have this little graph that allows us to visualize traffic on each of the Wi-Fi channels, and you might notice that channels 1, 6, and 11 are the most popular, which is because these are non-overlapping frequencies, meaning that there is less chance for interference. Now, you might also notice that on channels 12, 13, and 14, we have virtually no traffic going on, which is because these are restricted channels in the United States. So now that this is working, we're going to take a look at some of the parameters that we can use with the Wi-Fi Coconut tool. 
So you can see we have some options here for interfacing with the built-in LEDs, and then also some further options down here that allow us to control the display and output of the coconut tool. Now, starting with the LEDs, you can see we have the option to entirely disable them with the disable flag. We can use the invert flag to disable the initialization sequence. So basically keep the LEDs turned off until traffic is detected. And then we have the option to keep them persistently turned on if you want to give yourself away in public. Now, as for the rest of these options down here, the no display and the quiet flags can be used to basically silence the output of the coconut tool. So if we go ahead and try that out, I can run sudo wifi coconut dash dash no display. You can see this still shows us the initialization sequence, indicating that the radios are able to successfully start up. But you can see that it silences the output of the graph that we had earlier, as opposed to the quiet flag, which you can see just gives us no results at all. Now, the reason why you might want to use a command like this is if you're piping the output of the Wi-Fi coconut tool to another command like T-Shark or TCP dump or something like that, or if you're calling the Wi-Fi coconut from a bash script, then you don't necessarily need the output or the graph. And in fact, if you're using a tool to monitor the packet stream like grep or awk, this could potentially mess with your results. Now, at the moment, this currently isn't saving the output anywhere. So in order to do that, you would want to use the PCAP flag in order to save this to a file that we can analyze through a tool like Wireshark or T-Shark. To do that, all you have to do is just add the flag dash dash PCAP and then save it to the file name of your choice, which I'll save as beans.txt or actually beans.pcap. Then boom, after it starts initializing, it should save it to beans.pcap if I open up a new terminal and then type ls, you can see that we have this beans.pcap file here. Now, as for the rest of the options that we have, most of them are fairly straightforward, but the only one that might be a little bit confusing is this plain.11 flag. But basically all this does is this will strip out part of the Wi-Fi packet called the radio tap header, which contains information about the radio that's transmitting. So the signal strength, the channel that it's being transmitted on, the radio frequency, and other good stuff like that. Personally, I don't find this useful, but if you only want to keep the raw Wi-Fi packet data, then this will do the trick. So now let's head back over to the Hack5 documentation and talk about some tools that we can use to start gathering reconnaissance. So you can see that there's a couple command line tools that are supported by default, which include TCP dump and T-Shark. So these are really useful for live packet filtering. And you can see here, basically what this command is doing is it's taking the output of the Wi-Fi coconut program with the dash dash PCAP parameter. And instead of writing it to a file, we use this dash substitute to pipe the output over to a tool like T-Shark, which we can use to look for specific packet types and basically filter on the go instead of writing it out to a static file. In addition, some other cool tools are supported as well, such as Kismet, which is one of my favorite reconnaissance tools that also supports some pretty awesome features like war driving with the addition of a GPS module and also has a really nice browser user interface. We'll explore how to use that in future episodes and also some more advanced use cases of TCP dump and T-Shark as well. But for now, let's go ahead and run this in a terminal and see what this does. So the thing about T-Shark is this is just a command line version of Wireshark, which makes it great for applications like live filtering and tracking. And you can string together all the same parameters that you would use on the Wireshark interface directly to the command line tool. So here you can see we're getting just the raw stream of unfiltered Wi-Fi data since I'm not really trying to do anything fancy. But to get an idea, in a previous episode, we actually used T-Shark with the Wi-Fi coconut in order to track down my friend Irish by setting up a filter that looked for specific networks his phone is trying to connect to and used this to track down his device by signal strength. Now, if you want to keep your options flexible and don't want to do any of this fancy live packet filtering stuff, I would honestly just recommend using the regular Wi-Fi coconut tool and saving the output to a PCAP file when prompted. This will allow you to gather as much reconnaissance as possible without having to fuss around, and you can always analyze that data later. One really great tool to do that is Wireshark, which is a visual packet analysis tool that lets you click through the packet stream and filter out through a really nice graphical user interface. Now, since I don't want to dox myself, we're going to take a look at a data capture that I got at a local Starbucks from the Wi-Fi coconut. So I captured this data in the span of around 10 minutes, and you can see that this is really dense since we have complete oversight of the entire 2.4 gigahertz band. Now, if you're wondering why we can't stream packets live to this interface like you would with a regular Wi-Fi dongle, since the coconut identifies as 14 different Wi-Fi chips, this means you would have to start each of them up separately in monitor mode and then select them on the Wireshark interface list, which is kind of a hassle, so maybe I'll cover that in a future video. 
But what's great about Wireshark, if you're not familiar, is the interface makes it really easy to just click through and select interesting packets and create a filter. So for example, if I click on this probe request here, I can just click through some of the information. And if I wanted to create a filter for a probe request, I could just right click, apply as filter, and then boom, now we're able to see every network that devices around us have connected to in the past. And we could potentially use this for doing something malicious, like starting up a rogue Wi-Fi access point. Now, if I go ahead and click on packet, you can also see some other vital information about this, like the transmitting and receiving address of this packet. And then also here you can see the radio tab header that I mentioned earlier, which reveals information like the signal strength of the communication. You can see the channel that it's operating on and even the specific frequency. So if I wanted to sort for all packets that are specifically coming from channel seven, I could just go ahead and apply this as a filter and then boom, over here we can see every packet that was sent on channel seven. And of course, if I go ahead and set this to a restricted frequency like channel 14, for example, you can see that we have no traffic going on here whatsoever. The coconut really sets itself apart from any other Wi-Fi hacking tool that I've worked with, and it makes it really simple to gather reconnaissance on the entire 2.4 gigahertz band. Now, while I wish this also supported 5 GHz as well, this is still perfect for applications like war driving since most networks offer visibility on both frequencies, and since most low-cost IoT devices and other products like that are going to be operating on the 2.4 GHz spectrum. Now, that being said, this is still one of the coolest products that I've worked with so far this year, and I'm really excited to show off some upcoming projects and proof of concepts featuring the coconut. If you guys are interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below and make sure to check out the description to see some ways that you can help support our show so we can continue making free educational hacking content every week. If you want to see what I'm up to, you can follow me on Twitter at Alex Lind and also check out hackat.com to take a look at my educational hacking tool called The Nugget and pick one up to follow along with future educational tutorials. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.